Hey, this is an intro to an intro a video that I put together that is not a very good video. I have coughing fits. I have to make breaks for the coughing fits. I came across an article and it's interesting. I was thinking about this video after I got done making it. Um, it's a Christian website and the article, the, uh, the website, I'm sorry, the website is called What Christians Want to Know. And I was driving to Home Depot and I was thinking about that title. And then I was thinking about how the article's put together and how they write it. <laughs> and it's like, you know, they're not writing the truth here. They're not even, they're not caring about whether it's true or not at all. That's not the point of this article. It has nothing to do with explaining to Christians what the facts are, what truth is. They're writing what Christians want to know. That's what Christians want to know. And there's a little part in there. I don't have the screen up in front of me now, but underneath it, it says something about encouragement, da-da-da-da-da, for Christians. It's like a little cheerleading website, you know? It's like, go, go, go! And, and all this stuff that they put isn't, isn't about telling them the, the facts and what's real. It's about giving them encouragement. That's all it is. And, you know, oh, feel good, little Christian. Feel good, feel warm and fuzzy. There's so many people, there's so many historians that have documented Jesus' existence that we can't even put them on this page. There's just so many of them. And Archie, <laughs> today is my day for not saying even words I do know. It's my cold. My cold makes the, brings down my ability to function. Um. Archaeology, yes, there's arche archaeology and, and paleontology verify the Bible. Oh my gosh, anyway, I made this, this video about this website. You know, it makes me angry. It makes me angry at myself now that I didn't go to school more, that I didn't study more, that I'm old now, and I don't know if I could go back and really study this stuff. I would love to be somebody like Richard Carrier, who really knows shit, you know, and can pronounce those big words and can really just flay a lie. I wonder what Richard Carrier would say about this article, you know? But I'm not. I'm just this little mediocre peon whatever. I can't even say half the words that I'm trying to read in this because normal dysfunction, whatever, plus I'm sick. But it's just frustrating. I wish when I read this kind of bullshit, oh, and Christians, it makes me so angry that Christians read this. You know, they might be actually seriously searching for answers, but a part of them is like, well, I want reassurance. You know, these atheists who say things and they got me kind of, you know, I, I need some reassurance. So they go to this website and then they walk away like this. They just feel so much better. There's all this facts and evidence supporting Jesus. Oh, I feel so much better. Those atheists don't know anything. That's what this website's for. It's for soothing the, the doubt, the doubts, the raging doubts, and soothing that poor, that poor Christian who's wavering in their walk with God. That's what this website's about. It angers me. It's called lying for God. And it angers me. This website angers me. And the fact that I'm sure there's many more. Anyway, that's my intro to the intro of this video. And now I'm going to play the, the rest of it. I came across this website. I just have to share it. Um, I was actually thinking about putting a different video together about the various historians that Christians try to say uh, are proof that Jesus existed. Like historians like Josephus, who was like born... 30 some years after Jesus' alleged death, <laughs> and Tacticus, or Tacitus, however his name is pronounced, who was born like 20 years after his alleged death. Um, it's kind of like after Jesus' alleged death, there was nothing. Nobody wrote about him. Nobody during his life wrote about him either, not a single word. During his life, nobody during his entire life wrote one word about him that we, that anybody has found. And after his death, dead silence. Nobody wrote about him. Nobody knew about him. Nobody talked about him. He was just ceased to exist. At least nobody bothered to write anything down until these men that were born 20 to whatever, 60 years after his death, grew up 
and became historians. And then what were they were what were they writing? Were they writing about first-hand knowledge of him? No, they weren't even alive when he was allegedly alive. Um, they were writing what the Christians around them were saying. That's it. The stuff that's legit. Josephus is is commonly believed to be a complete forgery. So, anyway, I came across this website. It's a Christian website, and it's really funny. What Christians want to know. What historical evidence... And this is stuff that Christians read, okay? Christians read this, and then they go on to YouTube, and this is what they have in their heads when they, when they go up against atheists. What historical evidence is there to support the existence of Jesus Christ? It gets better. Is there actual historical evidence to prove the existence of Jesus Christ? Did ancient historians believe in the actual person of Jesus Christ? Can historical evidence about Jesus Christ's existence be believed? Is there actual historical evidence to prove the existence of Jesus Christ? This is written by a Christian, obviously. This is a Christian website. Even though the Bible is a collection of historical facts that have been verified by archaeological, or actually verified by archaeology and paleontology, I have to read that sentence again. Even though the Bible is a collection of historical facts that have been verified by archaeology and paleontology, We will restrict our article on the written human records of Jesus Christ's authenticity and historicity. You know, it's fun how they just throw that out there, but then they don't bother to... We're supposed to skip over that part. Oh, it's been verified by... Oh, archaeology and paleontology, it's been verified, but we'll skip over that for right now. We'll talk about the other stuff. And the Christian's like... I had to stop. I'm prone to have coughing fits, and I and I had one, and I might have another one. They throw that out there. The Christian buys it, hook, line, and sinker, and they just assume. Then then you get a Christian on YouTube, an atheist encounters a Christian who says, "Oh, the the Bible has been verified by history and in by science and in history. The the Bible's been verified." No. It has not been. And the reason this article doesn't fucking bother to go into detail about that is because it's not true. There's no verification of anything in the Bible. There is no historical facts that I am aware of. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's, like, in the entire book, maybe there's, like, this much historical truth to the thing. But there's next to nothing that's historically accurate about the Bible. It has not been verified by archaeolo... Why am I saying that? By archaeology and paleontology. Paleontology? Do you know what paleontology is? It's the study of fossilized bones. So what are they digging up? Fossilized people and verifying that they're certain people? What does paleontology have to do with the Bible? Paleontology, I'm sorry, does not remotely support anything in the Bible. There's no fossil records to support the, the Great Flood. There's no, there's a lot more to it. There's, there's the layers of the earth and whatever. There's nothing physically in the earth's crust or the whatever, the layers of, of whatever. I'm trying to think of the word. Um, 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 um. Anyway, there's nothing to show. There's nothing to show that this stuff is true. And I just love how they skip. They just kind of put that out there. Choo! And then they're, then they're gone. Choo! Gone. Okay. So let's see. Here's another one. There are so many. Oh, shit. Coughing fit. There are so many historians that have written about Jesus Christ that it would be impossible to include them all here. That's hysterical. I'm sorry. There's like four, four or five, and all of them born after Jesus' alleged death. It'd be like Michael Jackson. Somebody as big and famous as Michael Jackson, you know? 
First of all, he'd have to live on the planet and have nobody write about him while he's doing his, his wonderful things with music. Nobody write about Michael Jackson, nobody document anything. And then he dies and nothing, nobody says a word about it, nobody documents, nobody writes anything about Michael Jackson, da da da, it's dead silence. He's forgotten. 60 years later, boom, suddenly we're having a big Michael Jackson thing and people are writing about Michael Jackson and talking about him and that's about as likely to happen. I mean, how does that, how does that ever happen? In the real world, a famous person, lots of stuff is written about them while they're alive, then they die. Lots of stuff is written about them after they die and then it sort it of slowly fritters out, doesn't it? Even the really famous people like Michael Jackson slowly fritters out you stop you stop people stop talking about it. life goes on da, da 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 it's never the other way around it's never who's his life is doing mirac miraculous things he's raising people from the dead he's walking in water he's feeding the multitude with bread and fish all this exciting stuff nobody bothers to write about it nothing nobody writes nobody tells their friends or, or family who write about it nobody writes about it. the guy ascends into the clouds nobody writes about it the guy the guy causes his on his death there's an eclipse or something and and the graves open up and dead people walk around and greet their relatives nobody writes about it yeah the tomb opens up and and his body is gone there's no missing persons thing on in the in the newspaper. Nobody's writing about any of this. He ascends into the clouds. Nobody writes about it. Time goes by. Cricket, cricket, cricket. You know, nothing. Dead silence. Dead silence. Dead silence. And then somebody's born 20 years later. I'm talking about Tacitus or Tac Tacitus. So I guess that's his, how you say it. 20 years later, he's born. He's got to be. You got to think another. 15 years before the guy starts to write. So what's that, 35 years or so after Jesus' alleged death, finally somebody's starting to talk about him or write about him? I'm sorry, that's just not the way it works with famous people. That's not the way it works. People are famous. People talk about them and write about them. They die. People talk about it, write about them. Then they slowly kind of disappear into the, because, you know, people move on. It doesn't happen the other way around. There's not dead silence and then six years, years later after they die, people start talking about them and he's suddenly famous. That's not the way it works. Anyway, this guy, this guy's saying that there's so many historians out there, it's impossible to include them all here. I, I, I know of maybe five that I've heard of. That's not a lot. And there are none of them. Not, not one single one. There were actually very prolific historians that were alive and kicking during Jesus' time. There was even some living in Jerusalem at the time of his alleged death. Not one of them wrote a single word. Some of them were very prolific, and they wrote about everything, details about what was going on in the Rome, Roman Empire and the out, outskirt, out whatever, outlying cities or whatever. They wrote about everything. They didn't write about him. Anyway, so, okay, we're, we're, they don't have enough room to write about all these many, many historians. There, it's like there's so many of these historians' testimonies. They underline that would have to be, a, oh, here we go. The fact is, there are so many that these historians' testimonies would have to be expanded into a major volum, volum, <laughs> big book, okay? You know, somebody picked on me the other day for the fact that I can't say big words. You know what? Fuck you. We all have our, our, little, our limitations and none of us are perfect. Voluminous, vol volumous. <laughs> voluminous, voluminous book. Okay, whatever. For time's sake, <laughs> this is such bullshit, we will restrict historical evidence to those major historians that have the greatest authenticity. Oh my god, I, I wish there was a way to comment to this. This is such fucking bullshit. What Christians want to know, topics to, to equip and encourage and energize and Christians come here and they read this stuff and they seriously believe it. Atheists who get frustrated with these people because they know shit. It's because of websites like this. 
Okay, so Thales, 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 T H A L L U S, is perhaps the earliest secular writer to mention Jesus in his writings. Even though his writings are so ancient that no copies exist but those of Julius Africanus, whose writings were around A.D. 221, quotes Thales. Thales. Thales and Africanus both mention a strange darkness that occurred at the point of Jesus' crucifixion. And these stories of a strange darkness were written about far and wide on the earth. Right. They all coincided with around 32 to 33 AD. The written record of Thallus confirms that Jesus lived and was crucified and that something highly unusual and unexplainable happened on that day. There were so many reports of various earthquakes, destruction, and a strange darkness that occurred around A.D. 32 through 32. That's what it says. Isn't A.D. 32, like 32 years after his death? Isn't A.D. after death? That's what I thought. I don't know. Seems a little odd. Anyway, Africanus also mentions a historian named Phlegion, Phlegon, P-H-L-E-G-O-N, who wrote a chronological history around A.D. 140. In this history, Phlegon also mentions the darkness surrounding the crucifixion in an effort to explain it. But even more interestingly, he mentions Jesus' ability to foresee the future in describing the life of our Savior. Okay, so, so, let's see, um... Thales. Thales. I'm going to come back. Okay, where was I? Out of curiosity, I looked up Thales in uh, just Wikipedia. And if I can get the thing to work here. It basically says, It is commonly claimed that a chronologer named Thales, writing shortly after 52 CE, mentioned the crucifixion of Jesus and the noontime darkness surrounding it, which reportedly eclipsed the whole world for three hours. Richard Carrier attempts to explain it as an ordinary solar eclipse, but this is not a credible interpretation of the evidence. A stronger case can be made that we actually have a direct quotation of what Thales said, and it does not mention Jesus. Okay, out of curiosity, I looked up Phlegon, P-H-L-E-G-O-N. Phlegon of Trails was a Greek writer and a freedman of the Emperor Hadrian, who lived in the 2nd century A.D. Next. 2nd century. 2nd century. This article. <laughs> Keeping in mind what they said about how the archaeological and, and paleontological and all that wonderful stuff proves, <laughs> verifies the Bible. Okay, this is that article. So you know it's very accurate. Okay, it's talking about Josephus now. Now, anybody who does any research beyond the bullshit, the, the pages and pages and pages of bullshit Christian websites actually digs a little deeper will know that there's shit that has been put into Josephus that is not his writing. It was put in there later and is highly believed to be put in there by a very desperate church trying very hard to create evidence for their claim that this guy Jesus actually lived. Okay, but this article of course will not mention this. It says <laughs> it's talking about Josephus. He even describes the death of John the Baptist and mentions the executions of the Apostle James, the brother of Jesus. In Josephus' final passage, he writes that Jesus was a, ma a wise man and the Messiah, and there is even a highly accurate retelling of the resurrection story. A highly accurate retelling of the resurrection story and they have a little exclamation point after that. That's the part that's forged. The very accurate retelling of the resurrection story is fucking forged and put in there 
by the church. Different penmanship, different writing style. It's written by a Jew who actually calls Jesus the Lord or Jesus the Christ like a Jew. Would ever say that. Anyway, if you really want to know about the forgery, you can Google it. It's pretty common knowledge. One of the most intriguing entries was dis was recorded in Josephus Antiquities of the Jews. Now that <laughs> this is the fake part. Now there was about this time Jesus a wise man. If it be lawful to call him a man, would a Jew say that? For he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ. Again, would a Jew say that? And then Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men amongst us, would Pilate let Jewish leaders tell him what to do? Pilate hated the Jews. If he knew the Jewish Jewish leaders wanted him dead, they would have Pilate would have set him free. So that's bullshit too. Um, Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross. Those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day. Isn't it wonderful how this Josephus just got the whole story so perfect? Isn't it amazing? Ah, as the divine prophets had foretold, and these 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him, and the tribe of Christians so named from him, are not extinct to this day. Isn't that special? Isn't that special? This article is really long. I wonder if I can do this. Actually, I can probably finish this. I'm just going to read it. It's so stupid. Ah, oh, okay. The interesting thing is that the historian Oregon states that Josephus was not a believer and Jesus is the Christ. No, he wasn't. Isn't it so odd that he would write that paragraph? Whoa! Maybe, you know, I have this idea that maybe the church, like 4,000 years later, or 400, maybe it's 400 years, I don't know. I guess it's 400 years later. Stuck that paragraph in there. Different penmanship, different writing style. Everything is totally not right with the where, where it's sitting on the... Anyway, whatever. Uh-huh. So he wasn't... They're saying Josephus was not a believer in Jesus. There's no evidence that he even accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. But Josephus declares this Jesus to be the Christ. Bullshit. The manuscript evidence in support of the ironclad pre-acritish pre God. We're... I know, I thought I had a big vocabulary, pre-A-C-C-R-E-T-I-O-N-S, reference to Jesus and Josephus is very strong and accepted by the great majority of professional historians. From the reading of Josephus, there is no serious reason to doubt the historical evidence of the existence of Jesus of Nazareth. I love that. And accepted by the great majority of professional historians. They actually wrote this bullshit. And Christians will read this and believe it. Unreal. Can evid can historical evidence about Jesus Christ evidence wait, can historical evidence about Jesus Christ evidence be believed? Ugh. You know. There's I, I guess I could go through. Should I read it? <laughs> you know, there's only so much bullshit somebody can take without falling over dead. Even the non-Jewish historical sources of the time mention Jesus, and it is nearly universal. There was a common knowledge of Jesus' life and death among the people in the first few centuries. Right. The lists of historians are enormous. Tacitus, who was born 20 years after Jesus' death, uh, Suetonius, AD 125, does that mean he was born 125 years after Jesus' death? Lucian, mid-2nd century, right. Galen, AD 150, De Pulsum Differentus, 2.4, I don't know, Celsius, eh, whatever. You know what? I'm skipping over stuff. Too many big words. <laughs> Jewish historicity and story became known from the Mediterranean to Africa. From Asia Minor, that's because the cults spread out. 
<laughs> spreading the lies everywhere. Uh, and into most of the known world at the time. One example is around 70 AD when a Syrian philosopher named Mara Bar Serapian, Serapian, writing to encourage his son, compares the life and persecution of Jesus with that of other philosophers who were persecuted for their ideas. Okay, so the myth spread. That doesn't prove the myth is true, and it doesn't mean this guy actually lived. Anyway, I'm done reading this piece of bullshit. Um, I will leave the link on, on this of this website if anybody really wants to go there. But holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. And this is, this William Lane Craig apparently tries to, somewhere tries to say that Josephus is, that that's an actual, that's actual evidence for Jesus. That's just like, I... That just tells me even more the guy has cotton balls for for a brain, you know. Um, it's not just the fact that he was born like 30 some years after Jesus' death. It's everything else. It's the fact that the paragraph doesn't fit with the other stuff before and after the paragraph in the writing. It's the fact that the, the, the writing style is different. It's the fact that it's so letter perfect what the church would want to have said. The whole story of the resurrection in a little paragraph stuck right in there. You know, and a Jew who would never say those things. Anyway, so I just had to make a video because I came across this thing, and, and, and this isn't exactly what I wanted to say um, about everything. Well, actually, hey, hang on. Vinny the Younger. Just trying to look up when people were born. That's what I was originally going to get into, was the fact that these, these historians were, like, born so much later. Um, <clears throat> dum da dum Finney the Younger, I'm Christians. Actually, born, born 61 AD. Mm -hmm. 61 AD. Pretty sure that's 61 years after, unless I'm completely wrong. I thought AD stands for after death. Um, Josephus who was forged, so it doesn't really matter anyway, 37 AD, 37 years after death. And Tacitus, that's another one he mentioned. AD 56. These guys were all born after the guy died. Anyway, I just get tired of this, um, and there's really no nothing we can do about it as atheists because there's all this bullshit. Christians are like little sheep grazing in lush pastures of bullshit, and there's just no way. And then they come onto YouTube and they say to atheists, "You don't, you haven't done your research." That's my newest thorn. I've got somebody telling me you haven't done your research. It's like, is this the shit that you've been reading, dude? Because, damn. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put this together and hope it comes out looking like a video. <laughs> if you've been watching, thanks. Bye.